heard me talk about patience a lot. And for some of you parents, that is the best choice for you. You are in a season of patience. But for many of us parents, that is not what you should be doing. You should not be being patient right now. You have a hurting family. You have a hurting child or teenager. And you do not need to just sit on the sidelines and be a passive, permissive parent and wait it out. You need good tools and you need to step in. You need to be a leader. You need to be the one who just says, I love this kid too much to do nothing about it. I love this family too much. I'm too powerful to just sit down and do nothing about it. Or it's I'm hurting. I'm hurting. You guys may not be hurting, but this is a win-lose relationship. And I'm not just gonna sit back and do nothing about it. I'm the freaking parent. I'm, this is not working for me, and I wanna do something about it. Quick break in this video. I saw on the news last night that Amazon just acquired another company. The company is called iRobot, and they make the Roomba. I used to have one, little little robot vacuum that goes around your house. Now that's just another thing we hear about where these huge corporations just keep getting bigger and bigger. Shout out to our sponsor, Switch Away. Click the link in my bio if you're interested in learning more about how we can switch away from these large corporations to support US made, US manufactured products. Don't sit in your pain, solve it. If you have a problem in your house, you don't just stare at it and whine and you say, oh, this thing's broken in my house. You drive your butt down to Home Depot, you get the right tools and you fix it. Or you call somebody and say, fix this problem and you get it done because that's what healthy adults do. We fix problems. I'm here to not fix your problems, but I'm gonna show you how to fix your own problems. I wanna to put tools in your toolbox, tools that we didn't get from our parents so we can lead, so we can guide, so we can love, so we can be the best parents of ourselves. And all those crappy tools that we're using to sabotage ourselves and our own parenting and our kids, we're gonna throw that away. We're gonna do something different we've never done before. I'm gonna show, I want you to click on the, um, the link in the chat and I want you to watch a two minute TikTok video that I just posted. For those of you watching the recording, um, I'll add the link and or add the video and you can watch it. So we're gonna take a two and a half minute quiet time and I'm not gonna say anything. And I want you to uh, click on this video, watch it, and I'm gonna talk to you about the power and the beauty of leading family meetings. Because most likely you've never led a family meeting before. Or most likely you've tried and you sucked. Or most likely you tried and your kids sucked and they're rolling their eyes and they're being this and they're being that and you just per throw your hands up. And um, I don't know if family meeting is a tool but you know what it is? It's an avenue, it's a soil, it's an environment for you to use good parenting tools. Watch the video and let's talk about it in two minutes, go. Hey, I just got out of an hour and a half long family meeting with my family. Let me tell you three tips on how you can lead an awesome family meeting with your family. So make sure you hear the last one because it's the best. Hey, what's up, my name is Sean, I'm a family coach and I've been helping parents raise amazing families and kids for over 20 years. I like barbecue, I'm an avid outdoorsman, I like football and basketball and good beer. I live near a lake that I'm walking down to right now. I'm 44 and I got three kids, 17, 13, and six. And my buddy just called me up and gave us free tickets to the Backstreet Boys classic tip number one is to make your family meetings comfortable for the kids to get some bagels get some donuts get comfortable in the living room make sure it's not too long the last thing you want to do is have a lay family meeting that runs too long and nobody got time for that oh man the number two thing is so important to make a great family meeting you have to speak from your heart not your head if you don't have a culture of family meetings your home especially in the beginning the kids might be like well weirded out they might feel defensive or attacked but if you speak out of your butt or speak from your head the meeting is going to go downhill you just screwed yourself and just ruined your meeting. Instead, speak from your heart and share feeling words. You wanna speak from your head? Go to work. All things parenting, you gotta learn how to speak from your heart. A big reason why my coaching is so successful and help thousands of people is because I coach parents how to thrive in the emotions of parenting, how to speak from your heart, how to get your kids to speak from their heart, and how to connect as a family, heart to heart. And here it is, the number one thing you can do to have an awesome family meeting is to actually have regular family meetings. Schedule them, plan them, have them. Make family meetings a normal part of your home culture. Your kids might be sighing and rolling their eyes for the first two or three meetings, but by the fourth one, they'll be like, oh yeah, this is kind of what my family does. We come together as a family to rally, to team up, to love each other, to grow together, to learn together. And when times are tough and the family or the siblings are not vibing with each other, well, we 
have family meetings every week. Why do my family meetings just go amazing? Because our kids know this is what we do in the Donahue home. We have family meetings where we rally together to grow together. I want you to get ready to ask me a question about a fear you have, a concern you have, a pain you have, because I want you to lead a family meeting this week. I don't really do this in the parents club. I don't know, I just kind of in like an edgy mood today. I might come off a little bit more aggressive for some reason, I don't know why. She had a big workout, I don't know why, but I just feel different and I want you to plan a family meeting this week and I want you to come back next week and tell me and the whole freaking group how it went. Now I'm gonna tell you right now because I've been leading family meetings for a long time. When I first started family meetings, I sucked at it. I sucked! And so learn from me, I've been in the trenches here. I got a 17, almost 18 year old, I learned a lot about family meetings and I just told you three tips and I can give you much more. That was just a silly TikTok video that takes me five minutes to film and 10 minutes to edit. This is actual parent coaching, not stupid freaking TikTok or Instagram. I get to talk with you, I get to see your faces, I get to see beautiful kids artwork from Austin a Realtor out of Austin, Texas, Chris. I get to see these this beautiful hair of Yeshem and this wonderful woman here and this awesome man who's an expert and I'm gonna join his barbecue club and that wonderful smile he's got. This is real, right? This is real. I'm so happy and honored to be in your life and talk with you. So here's a couple thoughts. Okay, so especially if you've got like a nine-year-old or up, just expect they're gonna be salty about a family meeting. You've gotta have family meetings. Make it a part of your culture. Um, and woo them, make it really good. Make it fun, especially the first time. And, uh, and, and, and really this is gonna be a highly emotional experience because they're gonna bring the salt and they're bringing the cess. They're gonna get your buttons pushed. If you're new to the club, you're gonna learn about this lingo, this language, and words like buttons, reactions, self-care. You're gonna learn this by thriving with me and you're raising your own EQ, you're raising your own parent vocabulary. And you know what's actually really funny? I think about this all the time, I never talk about it. I'm gonna start a, parent, a grandparents club one day for $9 a month. Well, because of inflation, it's gonna be 12 bucks. I'm gonna be heck of old, we're all gonna be old and wrinkly, and we're gonna be talking about grandparenting. I don't even know, I mean, I'm not gonna stop. I'm not retiring ever, isn't that nuts? Like, we're not just raising our kids here, we're trying to change the world through our parenting. So just make sure you show up as an adult in that family meeting because they're gonna be acting like bozos and they're gonna be doing their reactions, they're gonna be rolling their eyes, they're gonna be saying stupid stuff. Why? Because a lot of reasons. One, they're kids, two, this, three, that, plus this is an emotionally intimate experience and so much of my coaching, what you see is we invite kids into these emotionally um, mature experiences. We ask them to, we share our feelings with them like normal people. That's really hard for an eight-year-old kid who has, uh, who has ADHD. That's really hard for a 16-year-old girl who's not used to seeing her dad's emotions. They've never taken a class on emotional development, how to comfort someone, how to connect with someone, how to apologize, the art of reconciliation, how to set boundaries, how to thrive in a family meeting. And so just expect that. That it's not, you know, you're gonna um, just go down and I would highly encourage you for the three, first three family meetings, just know you're signing up for something painful and there's no amount of donuts or uh, bagels that are gonna get your kids to probably th like just love the first family meetings. Now, I uh, if you do, if you have a kid who's different than what I'm expecting, that's awesome. We'll just get yourself most prepared to have a family meeting. Somebody posted on the comments of that video, which I just posted a few minutes ago, what do you discuss? Honestly, I, I, I'm just in this like really edgy mood today. I almost like um, texted back like something really like mean and like disrespectful, which I never do. In fact, when I went to Lake Tahoe with some buddies and we were barbecuing and drinking, I, I literally said to all my buddies, hey, if I, you see me pick up my phone and I start like looking at comments on TikTok, you have to stop me because I don't wanna be texting something crazy when I'm drinking, you know what I mean? So some of these comments are just so ridiculous. I'm really happy, I feel like 100% of my comments over the year I've been doing this are really, really, uh, really respectful, really kind, or like they don't cross the line. Okay, so back to uh, step two. But if you remember, the number one tool I teach in this, I hope you know the answer to this. It's called the heart talk. And uh, in a heart talk, um, there's excellent speaking and there's excellent listening. Speaker, listener. And in these hard talks experiences, we solve problems. Three weeks ago, I had a, an amazing experience with this man named Chris who's here. And it was such a privilege. 
I told my uh, team about him. I often, uh, and I, like, I get the privilege of being with this single dad to talk about something. He grew up really fast and really adventurous, jumping off uh, bridges into rivers and partying. And, and now he's got two lovely teen passionate girls and he wants to protect them because nobody protected him. And she wants to go jump off a bridge, which is kind of funny because if you usually say, well, your friend's gonna jump off the bridge, you're gonna jump. No, this is actually like in Austin, Texas. I'm imagining a beautiful bridge. You know, Chris, I want you to go and go to Google right now and uh, find an image of that bridge and I need you to post it because I need to see a visual because I just have big imaginations about Texas. Everybody here in California just thinks Texas is like the cat's meow and everyone wants to move there, Tennessee or Idaho, whatever. And so it's probably gorgeous. I'm imagining it. It's kind of like, you know what's great? If you haven't been to Yosemite, go to Yosemite. So Yosemite is actually super small. It is so small. You could walk all of Yosemite in like, probably like an hour. The valley is really small. You could drive the whole thing in 15 minutes, which you have to, because it's like a one-way loop. It's kind of obnoxious to drive. Anyways, back to this, and like just to helping him to process the emotions of his eighth grade girl going to jump off a bridge, but not a big bridge, a small bridge, right? In Texas, into beautiful warm water, because it's like 190 degrees in Texas right now. And that's what an, we want our kids to be doing. We want our eighth grade kids to be jumping off bridges into warm water in Texas, being safe, not doing stupid stuff, not drinking with high school boys, not diving. We want them and we want to trust them to live their life, to do adventurous things. And that's really going to build confidence in this young woman. It's going to build power in her. It's going to build trust connection because she knows her dad's kind of protective, scared, right? And so that's going to really send a message like my dad is cool. My dad works with me. Dad's, my dad's flexible. My dad's a dad. He's strong. He's powerful. He's successful real estate. He's in, but look at him, I like like him, and like he's cool, and like I can trust him. And that is really what it's pretty much always all about. It was never about jumping about a bridge. Things are never about what it's about. It was always about trust. Building it, fostering it, how to repair it. And so back to family meetings here. So yeah, so step two, you've got to speak from your heart. Because you will see when you have your family meeting, it's gonna go sideways really, really, really fast. You've got to come with an, kind of an agenda in your head. Just like I did, I got out of, hour and a half long family meeting. We had an agenda and I can tell you about that if you ask me, but it really doesn't matter because somebody asked me in the comments, that was the whole going back to the comments thing, five minute tangent. What do you discuss? Honestly, it kind of pisses me off. What do I discuss in a family meeting? What do I don't discuss? Everything, everything you discuss in a family meeting, everything. The pros, the ups, the downs, the sibling issues, the disrespect, the problems that came up three days ago. Remember, teaching moments never happen in the moment. They happen when everyone's calm and cool and collected and they're wearing their Hawaiian t-shirts eating chicken wings, right? Let's go, chat. And you got some donuts and you're chilling out. And it's like, hey, let's go through this. You guys have been struggling getting along. And I wanna discuss this. Hey, we had an issue on the camping trip, true story. And we all kind of reacted. And that was three, four days ago. That's how you roll when you're a parent coach. You don't start doing parenting on a camping trip when you're two IPAs in and you're grilling bar uh, burgers on your little Coleman grill. Come on now, and you're sunburned? That's an amateur hour, dude. You take that and you you do a little negative body language, which I do sometimes. Like, oh, 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 psh, man, I say some stupid stuff. But then you cap it. And then you handle yourself like a an adult and you have a family meeting four days ago. This really isn't about me. I mean, pretty much this is my wife's leadership, honestly. And I just kind of, she was the one who actually called them at a family meeting. Dude, that's why you need a partner. Cause I mean, I, I don't even know. I was honestly wanted the family meeting, but I struggled with avoidance. I was thinking like, do I want to call a family meeting? I don't know. I'm watching Stranger Things season five with Miley, my 13 year old. I kind of just want to watch that. I'm tired. So she comes up at like, 8.30 p.m., which is like midnight for me these days. And she's like, all right, I'm ready to start the meeting. And I was literally in bed, right? With, And I'm just like, all right, let's go. And the first few minutes of the family meeting, I was just like, uh, uh. But then I just got in the zone. An hour and a half later, solving problems, loving each other, guiding, teaching morals, integrity, sharing my feelings. Step two, you always got to share your feelings because when your kids come at you, just like my kids came at me, like, I mean, I heard something, you know, that I haven't heard before. One of my daughters is coming at me hard. She's like, Sean, I, <laughs> Sean. <laughs> she's like, dad, uh, I don't want to like violate her boundaries, but uh, you could imagine um, what would a 17 year old, my daughter say, a strong, one of the things that you, she said, 
is something like, you're just like giving us your script right now. Like I hear the way you talk, cause it's my home office, right? I hear how you talk, you're just talking how you always talk. This isn't real, you're not being real, right? Like you could imagine, right? If my daughter was saying that, can't you imagine, right? I mean, they hear me talk and do this all day. And I was like, all right, I knew someone was gonna, and it, you know. So then I had to, I had to pivot. I just changed my communication approach a little bit. Uh, I don't really swear normally ever, especially in my family, but I did say the S word in there. Gave me some street cred with a 17 year old. And uh, I just brought a little edginess and, and I was like, no, I'm being genuine right now. Let's talk. You got to speak from your heart because if you label, yeah, you're being this, you were being lame on that camping trip. No, you this. No, remember your training. Some of the best words in the history of mankind are these six words. Hurt, hurt my feelings, sad, disconnected, confused, and then the greatest word ever, the greatest word ever. I actually have a big section of this word about in my book. The word is uncomfortable. That's just a great word. It's so inviting. It's so cool. And I just feel uncomfortable. Why? Well, because, you know, it, it hurts me when you talk to your sister that way. Well, why? I didn't do anything wrong, right? But I'm just, I'm just uncomfortable with it. Well, that's your problem. No, it's actually our problem, shared problem solving. Because it's just, see, that's just an inviting word. You should share that with your friends and your family and your lovers. Lovers. You can, all right. So our point three on how to, how to lead a great family meeting is what I said. Hey, you got to get started. You know what? Your siblings are not doing well. They're not, they're not doing all the chores. They're not, th any topic. Instead of just handling it one-on-one, -on -one, use drama. Use drama. I use a lot of drama when I teach. As you can tell, this is not how I normally am, right? Like, if we're hanging out like barbecue, I'm not going to talk like Chad like this. This is how I normally will act. Man, these are good wings, Chad. Yeah. So, did you see that, um, like, Calgary Flames game? Yeah. I don't know. It was pretty good. Yeah. Who? Oh, me? I don't know, I think the Seahawks are probably gonna do okay. I don't know. They lost Russell Wilson this year, so, I mean, that's how I normally talk. This is not how, you know, whenever you see him on a screen, that's just like I'm acting, right? This is not how I normally am. But when you're with your kids in a family meeting, you gotta figure out, like, what type of character is best for the family meeting right now? What type of, like, personality am I gonna show in this team? Do they need the calm, like sedated parent right now, or they need the, uh, the, this is really not working for me. You know your kids, so you know what to do. And like I said in the video, make uh, one of the best things you can do, it really kind of makes sense, is make family meetings a normal culture in your home. It only takes three crappy family meetings, painful, where you're like picking your eyebrows out and eating them like I do sometimes, like a weirdo. Three of those, but by the fourth time, it's like family meetings are a normal part of your home culture. And dude, my kids, we say family meeting. And do they, could, all, th all three of them, 17, 13, and six, they just come like little robots. And they sit down and they just know how we roll. Sure, did the 13-year-old get up and go to the fridge? Freaking classic. We're like, what are you, what, yo, yo, what are you doing? We're having family meetings. She's like, what, can't get something to eat? Right, it's like, yeah, okay, you got a little, yeah, we haven't had a family meeting for a while. You, you know, no, you, you don't just stare at the fridge for five minutes, 13-year-old. Like who, what 13 year old boy wouldn't do that, right? It's not a boy, it's a girl, but still. Okay, so tell me some thoughts or fears about family meetings. Welcome to the Parents Club, everybody. Love